Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of My Autoimmune MD. Today, we're gonna be talking about rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm a rheumatologist. Of course you know that already. For those of you that don't know and are new to the channel, I am a rheumatologist and I'm training in integrative medicine and rheumatoid arthritis is one of the main diseases that I treat. So what exactly is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic autoimmune disease that can affect multiple organs of the body, but usually people manifest with joint pain and swelling. So let's talk about the joint pain. How do we as rheumatologists distinguish rheumatoid arthritis from the other arthritis like osteoarthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and all these other arthritis and joint pain out there? So let's talk about what a rheumatologist looks for when they're thinking about rheumatoid arthritis. And let's talk about the questions that I ask my patients as well. When a patient first comes to me with rheumatoid arthritis, I first ask them, when did your pain start? And what's the pattern of the pain? Is your pain worse in the morning than at night? How long is the morning stiffness? So rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis. And that usually means that the stiffness in the morning can last more than 30 minutes. So that's one of the ways that we help distinguish inflammatory arthritis from non-inflammatory arthritis. So non-inflammatory arthritis could be like osteoarthritis, which is more wear and tear. Inflammatory arthritis is more like rheumatoid arthritis. So we are looking for stiffness that's usually more than 30 minutes, but of course there are variations of it. Some patients won't have the stiffness more than 30 minutes. Some patients will have stiffness for the whole day or multiple hours in the day. Other things we look for in rheumatoid arthritis is the pattern of the joint pain, especially in the hands. Usually in the hands, we look for pain in the MCPs, which are your knuckles, and the PIPs, which are your joints in the fingers in the middle. That helps us because in psoriatic arthritis and osteoarthritis and other spondyloarthritis out there, such as ankylosing spondylitis, we are looking for joint pain more in the DIPs, which are your last um, joints in your fingers, and also the middle joints in the fingers, the PIPs. Other questions I ask my patients with RA are, do you ever have trouble taking off your rings? Because if you are wearing your wedding ring and you're having trouble taking it off, that sometimes is a sign that there is swelling because the hardest part about medicine and rheumatology and the most frustrating part, you probably as a patient would know, is that you're feeling pretty crappy when you're at home, you're, all your um, disease manifestations flare up when you're at home, but by the time you get to the doctor, sometimes all those aches and pains and the swelling goes away for that specific day, which is very unfortunate because sometimes rheumatologists and other doctors are looking for those signs that day and until they, don't, until they see those signs in the office, um, they're not gonna diagnose that disease. I operate a little bit differently. Um, history, what the patient tells me is really important, but you know, that's what's the most frustrating part is that sometimes when you go to the doctor's office, all your joints are back to normal. And then when you go home, they start flaring again. Now let's talk about labs. What do we look for in labs? So of course you get your CBC in rheumatology, which looks at white blood cell count, hemoglobin, platelets, and also you get your CMP, comprehensive metabolic panel, which is like kidneys, electrolytes, and liver. We also look for inflammation numbers. ESR, sedimentation rate, and also C-reactive protein, also known as CRP. Now, I tell my patients that these labs, yes, they're great if they're elevated um, and you're in pain, you're flaring, but I see patients that are flaring and these labs are completely normal. They're just two inflammatory markers to look at of all, all these immunology or inflammatory markers you can find out there. So I tell my patients, don't worry if the inflammatory markers are negative. It doesn't mean you don't have the disease. It doesn't mean that you're not flaring. And other markers you look for, more importantly, are the antibodies. So we look for um, the CCP antibody, rheumatoid factor. Um, those are two of the main labs we look for, but there's other ones that are in the works and coming out now. Anti-CARP, also known as anti-carbamylated protein, that's another rheumatoid arthritis lab that you can get as well. And when these labs are positive, it makes the diagnosis so much easier. And when they're positive, the patient's called a seropositive rheumatoid arthritis patient. And when these labs are negative, it's called seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So that's the distinction. 
Treatment wise, it's very similar. So usually for treatment, we are starting off with maybe something called DMARDs, disease modifying medications. They include methotrexate, leflunamide, plaquenil, and also sulfasalazine. These are medications that affect the immune system in general. Now you've probably heard of the biologics. Those are your stronger guns and that can potentially have bigger side effects. So some of them we watch out for cancer, especially lymphoma, melanoma. We always, well we should be advising our patients of this side effect, which is, you know, not common, but it can potentially happen. Allergic reactions, and also it can increase the risk of infection because these medications do calm down inflammation and these pathways of inflammation are needed to fight viruses and bacteria so when you are taking these biologics and you're sort of shutting them down these pathways you're not as strong in fighting these infections so i tell my patients when you are on these medications you might take a longer time to recover from that flu or that cold or if you have a skin infection, it might be harder for you to recover. Usually I tell my patients to actually stop these medications, the biologics, um, until they're better. So they recover faster. So some examples of biologics are tumor necrosis factor inhibitors such as Humira, Embro, Symphony, Remicade, and Simsia. There's five of them out there. And there's other medications we can use, such as the interleukin-6 blockers, such as Ectemra and Kefsara. There is Abatacept, also known as Arencia. There is Rituximab, which is a very big gun. And also, you have your JAK inhibitors, such as um, Rimvoke, Zelgans, and Illumian. And there are other medications we can use, but those are some of the main biologics. I might be missing some. And then your rheumatologist will probably get x-rays. Okay, so x-rays, what do we look for in x-rays? On x-rays, usually we see bone thinning or osteopenia of the hands in the very beginning. Uh, it might take a couple months or maybe even a year or two to see this effect. And then we see erosions over time. What are erosions? Erosions are essentially the size of your joints being eaten away from inflammation and rheumatoid arthritis. And that's what we see over a couple years. Some patients, their disease is very aggressive. They see that earlier. Some patients, they see that over 10 or 20 years if it's uncontrolled. So I've seen that before. That's what I look for in my patients. And these signs are irreversible. You can't reverse an erosion. You can live with it. You can limit its progression, but you cannot reverse it. So that's it for rheumatoid arthritis. Don't forget, it can affect many different joints. Your TMJs, hands, wrists, knees, shoulders, elbows, and feet and ankles. All these different joints. It doesn't really affect the lower back, but it can affect the neck, the C-spine. So be watchful of that. And there are other organs it will affect, such as the lungs, skin, um, and eyes. And we'll talk about that at a future visit. Um, comment below, do you have rheumatoid arthritis? What have you experienced? And what questions do you have for me? I would love to answer your questions at a future video. Take care guys, good talking to you all.